Hey everyone, welcome to TRG Podcast. I have here with me today an awesome guest. His name is Mark. Let's introduce you and see what you're all about. Thank you very much, uh, Winston and uh, mate. Great to be here and uh, being a part of it. So thank you very much. Yeah, as I said, my name is Mark, Mark Sanico. Um, a bit about me. Let's go. I'm a, I'm a, uh, a husband yeah, huh? and a father, you know, up the top first. And also a, uh, a mindset and empowerment coach, relationship coach. Mm. Um, what else am I? Relation, certified relationship coach, mm-hmm. sports mindset coach, a hypnopsychotherapist. Mm. And we blend all these modalities in. And um, I suppose another part of me, because my wife and I have had a business for about eight years. Mm. We geek out on human behavior. Okay. We love it. Yeah. We just love it. Give me an example. Oh, why people do what they do. Yeah. The thinking behind what they do. Mm-hmm. How do successful people become successful? Why do people stay down in the downdrum and the in the lows of life when they can actually move on up mm-hmm. if they choose to? Mm-hmm. And I suppose a part of my journey, and I'll share, and we spoke a little bit earlier about this. Mm. You know, for fifteen years, I had like a uh, my own little secret going on. How long ago was this? So 15 years ago from now or? No, no. So going back 10 years. So 10 years ago from now. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a secret that you know, my wife didn't even really know about. And the fact of that was I was a drug addict. Wow. And uh, she had no idea I was using it to the extent I was using it. Mm-hmm. She thought it was just on the weekends. Yep. Or when we had a party or something like that. Mm-hmm. I would indulge in uh, marijuana. Mm-hmm. Meth, ecstasy, cocaine. Everything. Everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. And um, she didn't know that I was using it. Well, it got gradually built up. Mm-hmm. And the thing was, though, I was working in corporate. Okay. So I was, I'm looking after two states. Yeah. Flying interstate quite often. And I had this secret of a drug habit. Mm-hmm. And eventually, as I, I had enough, going on my morning walks and then going... No drugs today. No gear today. Was that like it came one time or was it something that was hitting you quite often? Quite often, especially as my older kids got older and I'd had enough. Mm. I was on the rat wheel. The why, rat- can I ask why? We'll get into it as well, but yeah. the question that's coming to my mind is why? Like what, you know, you obviously had success. You had mm. your health to an extent, right? Mm. You married mm. man and everything mm. else. What was the need to be taking all these different drugs? Unresolved stuff within myself. Lack of fulfillment in the areas of myself. And just unresolved stuff. Mm-hmm. And when you're walking along in the morning and saying, no, nah, not today, not today. Sure enough, the afternoon comes around and it was like my pre-workout. Yep. It was nuts. And then, of course, it was that cycle, that cycle of going up and down. And then eventually it was like, I'm done. I've had enough of this. And uh, my wife actually um, bought me a ticket to a Tony Robbins event. Nice. In Sydney. Mm-hmm. The um, UPW, Unleash the Power Within. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is my chance. This is my time to stop. Mm. Did the walking on coals, the barefoot walking on coals. And I was, from that time, was, that was it. Mm. I, rang, I rang my wife on that night, on the Thursday night. I said, love, I want you to go to the shed, grab what's in there. She's like, okay, what's in there? Mm-hmm. And I had my paraphernalia in there. Yep. Your secret stash. My secret stash. Yeah. Chucked it out. She's like, okay. And after the event, I came back and I had to tell her because she had no idea mm. that I was like dealing with this, these demons within me. Mm. So I had to come back and say, and I'm thinking, this guy's going to go two ways. You're out of here mm. or she'll give me I don't know what. Mm. I came home and said, love, I've got to tell you something. She's like, you know what? So I'm a drug addict. I've been using drugs. Mm. Not just on the weekends, every day. Wow. And she's like... She hugged me. Wow. Hugged me. Mm. And we just embraced and cried. Yep. Cried. It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was the best thing. 
I'm sure that that was the beginning of a really, really hard journey, though. Or I would In, say liberating, liberating, yeah. but also you've probably had all sorts of things happen since then. Oh, very liberating. Mm -hmm. the, the, it was a massive challenge. I was packing my pants to tell her, mm. how do I do this mm -hmm. with you know, her? Because she could say, you're out of here. How much money have you spent? How long? Was so how long from this event when you felt um, empowered and you felt inspired to change your ways to then telling her, how much of a, was that when you straight got back from oh, Sydney? Yeah, I arrived back from Sydney on the Sunday or the Monday mm -hmm. and it was the following day. Mm-hmm the following day and why did you want to tell her like couldn't uh, you have just resolved this without telling her no I'd, I'd be I'd be open okay had to be fully open I need to be uh, truthful to me mm -hmm. to my partner to my wife yeah I had to be honest I'd, I'd, I'd take responsibility gotcha. and that's what's I'd, I'd own it yeah I'd own it and I couldn't hold another secret that's too much of a weight to burden mm. so I carry that around mm -hmm. it's too much so to actually share that and for someone to create that space for me to share that, mm. uh, she needed to get assistance as well in regards to Mark's just come out with this. How did, how did she, what, what does she do with that? Of course. So she seeked assistance from a coach, which mm -hmm. is awesome. And we're able to actually have a safe space for both of us to heal mm. because she had to heal from this as well mm -hmm. and for me to heal. So how long were you... Um, really addicted to drugs for like on the daily prior to this was uh, it did you say it was 15 years about well 15 years of uh well actually if you think of the well, actually probably longer if i think of when i started smoking marijuana yeah so when i was a, a teenager you know smoked marijuana weekends friends parties yep um and that 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 became a you know a constant thing for many years, mm. but the daily use of meth because that yep. was my my thing. Yeah, uh, that was for a good few years. Wow, a good few years. And I was you know, as I said, I was working in corporate, and then I had my own business as well after mm. that. Mm -hmm. And as I remember at a time when I had my own business and I was under the pump, mm -hmm. and I just my usage went up. Mm. It was it was it was crazy. I yep. think about it now and go, Hell, that's nuts. How did I function? Mm. But I was a functioning drug addict. Gotcha. So, you know, I could go to, I was doing meetings, everything. I was yep. a good dad, good, I still am a good dad. Yeah. I just had these things that I hadn't dealt with. So that's the thing. Usually when people think of drug addicts, they think of people who are down and out on the streets, breaking into houses, stealing cars, all this kind of stuff. Correct. Um, but when it comes to somebody who is running a household, has a family and is running meetings and running their own business, mm. to have something like that hanging over your head, um, did you, you, it sounds like you tried to take care of it by yourself a few times where you yep. had the morning walk and you said, today's not the day, but then you'd relapse and you'd, you'd go back into it. You'd probably go for a couple of days at best from what I can hear. Yeah, I, 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 yeah at best, yep. at best. And yeah, try to do it. Try to do it myself. Mm. Not cool. Not cool. Need, <laughs> need yeah. assistance. Need assistance. And I yeah. feel like that's, um, you know, I resonate with that as well because even though it's not as, as serious, well, in some ways it might be. When people come to the gym here, and they're struggling with food addiction, they're yeah. struggling with um, the way they talk to themselves, mm. um, being isolated from a community of people, and being able to provide a network or at least a platform for people to actually make friends and to be safe and to try to overcome their problems it makes it's very fulfilling so yeah so that that's gone on for a while now you have transitioned your life into being someone who empowers others mm. from when you told her mm. okay when you told her hey this is the problem that i have have you relapsed since then not at all that's been not clean since then it had i have no no it, or years ago mm -hmm. i was around it yep I, had, I, had, I have nothing, I have, it's, I have nothing, it does nothing to me. I, I just, I have this, it's like a repellent. Awesome. It's like, um, was it Superman in his kryptonite? Yeah, that's the one, so yeah. it's kryptonite now. Yeah, it's, yeah, I just go, I have just nothing for it. I have nothing for it. That's great to hear. And um, since that decision, and of course, yeah, coming back from that event, I still went and got assistance as well. Mm -hmm. So I went and... Um, 
I, sp- I went to Melbourne and saw my coach mm-hmm. for a full day. Yep. Just to really nail it in. Mm. But I'm so empowered about not going back there. Yep. That no, nah, there's no going back. Awesome. Because I know what's on the other side of it. And I like what you touched on there. Addictions, yeah, it can be food. It can be, uh, it can be over-exercising. Yep. It can be binging on Netflix. Mm-hmm. It can be anything. Mm-hmm. You know, because people think of drugs, porn, gambling, mm-hmm. all those sorts of things. And yet there's so much more mm. under the addiction umbrella. Mm-hmm. And w- whether we're trying to numb something mm. or not feel something, yep. that's what it's about. So yeah, now I really am about empowering people, about feeling stuff, mm. feeling what's really going on and allowing that in. That's awesome. One thing I heard um, that I really like a quote, it's that addiction begins and ends in pain. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It does. It's like, and we all have addictions, every human being on this planet to yep. some extent. Correct. Um, and we need to work with those. Some people have very interfering addictions that mm. can disable their lives and then other people have ones that don't necessarily interfere too much. Mm. But everyone has work to do and everyone Absolutely. can improve their station in life yeah yeah correct there's no i've had people say to me why are you going to go do more study mm. why are you going to go get coached again i was like well the journey doesn't end never it doesn't end yeah and for some people they may choose not to go do and that's okay mm-hmm. that's really cool if they choose not to but if you're wanting a little bit more or you want to experience a bit more mm-hmm. it doesn't end you know all the great most successful people in the world, they still go on, go a little bit further or explore more of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I just love that Mm -hmm. because there's so much within us that we actually haven't tapped into yet. Mm -hmm. And one of my my biggest things is we're like the phone. Mm. We only use a small percentage of it. And like within ourselves, we only touch on a small percent of what we're truly truly capable of. Mm -hmm. And when we can tap into more of ourselves, it's like, wow. There's actually some really cool things out there. And, and you create a new reference point for yourself of like, I did that. I was okay. Mm. I handled that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what else can I do? What's next? What's next? That's right. What did you... Um, so you got out of the corporate world then? Yes. You're out of that. And was that yeah. part of the process to trying to manage everything and make sure that you don't go back into certain behaviors or you thought, no, I'm on a new path now and I want to explore where this goes. Yeah, totally new path. Yeah. Totally new path. I kind of um, lost my passion. Gotcha. Uh, for what I was doing. And I suppose that's probably a reason when you don't have connection or adventure or that fulfillment, fulfillment mm-hmm. in what you're doing, yep. you can look for adventure in other ways. Mm. And I suppose drugs was mine. Mm. Uh, so you definitely left the corporate world because I just I just lost my passion for it. Yep. And uh, Monica actually started our business first, mm. um, and then I just studied her stuff. I just started studying it because I've always been a fan of human behaviour and uh, personal development. Mm-hmm. I've always loved that. Have for many many years, and uh, started studying her stuff. And I was like, ah, oh, this is cool. Mm. This is cool. Mm-hmm. And then I became a uh, sports mindset coach. I was like, this is the best. Mm. And um, next minute, we're both in the business. Awesome. And it's so good. Yeah. I've actually um, seen some of your posts come up um, and seen how you guys communicate. And what I like is you guys are pretty authentic. You know, it's not just, um, you know, think positive and everything will be okay. Mm. You know, you talk about some of the struggles you still have, mm. some of the things you feel when you wake up in the morning or when there's a tense moment between you and then rather than run to drugs or run to um, a victim mindset, you find ways to resolve these problems and then you are able to share that with other people. And I, I think that's pretty cool. Oh, thank you. And uh, a lot of people do say that and we want to come across as authentic because we're real. Mm. Just because we're relationship and mindset coaches mm-hmm. doesn't mean we have all our stuff together. Gotcha. We don't. Mm. If anyone wants to say they've got all their stuff together, they're kidding themselves. Mm. And like we touched on before, we're, we're a work in progress. And I think the more that we can share our pitfalls, our experiences, 
people can relate to that because mm-hmm. like, we're normal as well. We're still, a, I remember sitting at a networking meeting and a lady next to me said, oh, you must have the best relationship. I was like, we have a good relationship. Mm. We still have our ups and downs yep. because every relationship does. That's right. No matter what we do. But you don't turn to extremely unhealthy behaviours to try to cope. Correct. Right, so your coping mechanisms are now part of your um, program and also your journey that you're on is to find ways to cope constantly yeah. to keep healing and to also keep building on what's great about your relationship. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the more we can sit in, sit in uncertainty, mm-hmm. the better we'll become. Why is that so hard to sit in uncertainty? You know, we love oh, control and we love yeah. to not have to feel any pain, which is where the problems come in. Yeah. But when you say things sitting with uncertainty, it sounds courageous, but it's also terrifying. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It is very terrifying. And I suppose like water takes the easiest path mm-hmm. to go wherever it's going to go. Yep. However, in life, if we take the easiest path, we're kind of avoiding things and maybe we're not leaning into that uncertainty. And we know that, or maybe we don't know, that uncertainty does bring growth. When we can sit in there and that discomfort, what am, I, what am I to learn from this? What am I not seeing that I should be seeing? Mm. And rather than avoiding it, because as humans, we tend to just avoid stuff if it's tough. We go, hang on, that's a bit hard. I'm a little bit uncomfortable. I might just go this way. And there's a thing we say, uh, most people will do more to avoid pain than to experience pleasure. Here we go. Because say you're unhappy at work, you hate going to work, you get anxiety on the way to work, ring up, oh, I'm sick today, not feeling good. Next day, oh, sorry, little Johnny's sick, can't come in. You're just doing all, you're doing so much more to avoid it. Mm-hmm. And then when they've done a bit of, or they've got some courage to then go, hang on, maybe I can leave this workplace. Because maybe the lack of self worth and self trust knowing they can go to another place Mm -hmm. and still be successful, still earn money and enjoy their workplace. Mm. When they do it, quite often people say, I should have done that years ago. Yep. I should have changed careers. Years, right? Years. Years, Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's why people do more to experience pain than to experience pleasure. Mm. So rather than um, maybe coming to the gym here, Oh, nah, they will do whatever it's warm under the blankets right now. Yeah. Yeah. My alarm didn't go off. Yeah. 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 I'm not naming any names here. Like, (laughs) I've heard them all. Yeah, Um, you would have. One thing I do love, and we've spoken about him before, is Joe Dispenza. Mm. Um, I love how he talks about trauma. Mm. And he talks about how our biology starts to be shaped around our trauma and that we end up being a prisoner in the confines of our own neurological circuitry, right? So the way that our fear system works in our brain Mm. is how we actually start to function and Mm. we're limited by that. Mm. How would you give somebody advice on how to break through that circuitry? So it becomes like a physical reaction that people are feeling, Mm. right? Their trauma teaches them Mm. to start thinking about the world in a certain way because it's traumatized them. Mm. So they become fearful of what's in front of them. Yeah. So yeah. to get out of that can be quite a challenge, right? You can't just snap out of it. No, you can't. Such a cool topic. The thing about trauma, a lot of people think trauma is maybe sexual abuse, physical abuse, maybe a war, maybe a car crash. Trauma is subjective and it's to everybody, it's individual to anybody. Mm-hmm. It could be Maybe you lost your mum or your dad in the supermarket. Yeah. Maybe you lost your child in the supermarket. Mm-hmm. Maybe you were chased by a dog yep. when you were a kid. So it doesn't have to be a massive event because mm-hmm. that event, whatever it may be, will be massive for that individual. At that time, it can terrify At that them. At time. Yeah. After, to move through it mm-hmm. is first of all bringing awareness to it. Bring an awareness to yourself. Mm-hmm. What is it that's making me feel that way? Mm. What am I experiencing within my body? You know, am I tightening up? Am I avoiding it? So first thing is about just bringing awareness to it. Mm-hmm. And then from there, 
Definitely seek assistance, you know, depending on what it is. Seek, seek some assistance, but first of all, bring awareness to what it is, and then go, well, can I change this? Yes, you can. Do I want to change this? I like that you ask that question, do I want to change this? Because some people um, don't want it bad enough. And I'll give you an example. Mm. When I um, talk to people and they decide whether or not they want to join the gym, mm. um, I watch the cogs turning sometimes and people like when they initially come they're like let's go let's do it and then when it gets closer and closer to them deciding okay i'm about to join the gym that's where that kind of limitation and the way that their body starts to make them realize actually am i worthy of this am i going to be able to stick to this is this really going to work um am i going to be able to actually overcome my fears and they start thinking of all the problems and the cogs start turning and then they start saying no and they start resisting the possibility as you said there, to want to change or want to actually make a decision that it's time to do it. So it's like some people are just confident, motivated, and they jump into things. Other people are in such a bad space. They've had enough pain that that motivates them sufficiently to go, I need to make a change. No matter how scared I feel, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I love that because it is when someone has experienced enough pain Mm -hmm. in whatever position they've been in, then they'll take action. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting with the gym or anything really, uh, it's, uh, will I be judged? Yep. Can I do it? Yep. Will, will I be able to handle it? Mm. All these questions. It's really funny because my son had been on to me for a couple of years to go join CrossFit. Gotcha. And I'd been going to the gym, yep. doing strength training. And I wanted to do CrossFit. And you know what? I had my own stuff going on. Yeah. Can I do it? Yeah. Will I injure myself? Will they judge me? I had all this stuff going on unconsciously. Uh-huh. It was you, nuts. And do you remember what I first said when I saw you? Yeah, I, I remember well, I the first you, words. The question. Yeah, you said, are you defense? Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. uh, you know, you look hard. You've got a good body, sharp haircut. You know what I mean? You and, just look like a fit, strong guy, confident, ready to go. But little did I know that here you are going, uh, am I going to be able to do this? Yeah. yeah. It was funny because my response was, because I was thinking you're talking about football. Okay. I, was there, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were talking about football. Did I play in defense? Okay. Because I yeah. know I'm not defense. <laughs> what is he uh, talking about? Yeah. And I was like, uh, no, I played ruck. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, I remember that. Uh, yeah, I absolutely remember that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's good. It was a funny moment. <laughs> so then saying, speaking of that, what would you say then to um, people that would be fearful? Look, every gym's different, but how have you yeah. found this gym? Uh, this gym ticks all the boxes. Now, there's three unconscious questions mm-hmm. people ask themselves, and, this, the, and it goes on unconsciously. Mm-hmm. Do they know their craft? Can I trust them? Mm-hmm. Do they care about me? Mm. So when I turned up here, all those boxes were ticked mm. because when I see the coaches, they know their craft. They do. Mm-hmm. I watch them and they they explain and they know their craft. Mm -hmm. Do they care about me? Absolutely. Mm. They care whether I'm doing the form right. They care, hey, how are you going? Mm -hmm. They're checking in. Mm -hmm. Love that. And can I trust them? Absolutely, I can trust them. Because they've already ticked those first two boxes. That's awesome. So there's three unconscious questions that everybody asks themselves whenever they're buying something, going somewhere, doing something. Mm. If they're, if they're answered or if they're being shown, it's a, it's, a, it's a no-brainer. That's awesome. And, you know, I think that taps into why I get along with you quite well is because I can sense that um, genuine, authentic nature of who you are as a person. And that's why I've wanted to bring you on for a while to chat briefly. Um, I really appreciate you coming on today, but I also want you to give a final close-off message to the members. We could go on for hours, to be honest, Mark. We could. Yeah. I'm really digging this. And likewise, mate, I love uh, the connection is amazing. Yeah. And um, people may not be able to see it or hopefully they feel it because yeah. I can definitely feel it. And yeah, yeah I could sit here for hours yeah. and just chat. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it again. <laughs> yeah. um, but what I wanted to ask is how can people find you? If they're keen to know more about what you do or how you can help people, yeah. um, how can they find you if they want to learn a bit more about what you're doing? Yeah, cool. Uh, Facebook. Yeah, all of our stuff's on Facebook. Magnificent Mindset, Empowerment, and Mindset Coaching. Mm-hmm. Or just me. Just look up Mark Sanico. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Add me or my wife, Monica Sanico, because 
the beauty of having both of us, someone will click with me, yep. someone will click with Monica, and that's all cool. We don't get offended if someone wants to work with the other person. Gotcha. Um, it's about that person going on their journey. So yeah, Facebook, uh, Mark Sanico or Monica Sanico, Magnificent Mindset. That's great. What I'll do as well is I'll put a link in um, this oh, cool. video as well Thank so you. people will be able to find you a lot easier as well. Thanks, mate. Um, but really appreciate you coming on today. And yeah, I, I think we should bring you back on a second time and we'll dig in a little bit deeper to the ideas of addiction, how to navigate pain and problems and use mm. the gym as a way to, as a healthy outlet. Yeah. And then also um, a bit more about your journey because you're a very interesting character. Oh, thanks, mate. No worries. Really appreciate it. All right, thanks everyone. Um, we'll see you for the next one.